Hi, this is Konstantin from Zikabo, and I'd like to welcome you to our video series about the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro. In this video, we'll be creating a new queue that uses perforation cutting from scratch. Keep in mind that this is only one of the many possible ways the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro can be used. Before you start, make sure you've watched our previous video for the setup of the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro. To create a new queue, we're going into queue in the menu bar and to manage queues. We're going to hit the plus icon to create a new queue. And then Digital Factory will guide us through this wizard to set it up. We're just going to hit next on the, on the first step. Um, for printer, in, in this tutorial, it doesn't really matter what we select. You will just select whatever printer you have. I'm just going to select null here because we actually don't have a printer here. Um, and the, in the next step, we're going to select the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro. This should already been installed as part of uh, the setup video. And um, for port, we want to make sure file is selected. We're going to go into the port settings here and we need to specify um, the output folder, which is where all of the generated PLT files will end up. In our case, this is just on the desktop. But in your case, this can be um, literally anywhere. We want to make sure that the output file name is set to use the barcode value so our machine can find the matching file after scanning the barcode in the end. And that we set the default extension to lowercase plt. The default is uppercase, we just want to make sure it's lowercase. We confirm with OK and continue with the wizard. Now we can specify a name for our production queue. I'm just going to go ahead and name this Zikabo Perforation Cutting. We hit next. Then we can uh, select the media that is put into our printer. Any media works. We just want to make sure the maximum width is 600 millimeters, as that is also the maximum width the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro can work with. Um, at this point, we can also just turn on the registration system. We want to make sure to select the Zikabo DTF Multicut Pro DTF mode. And while we're at it, we'll just set it to automatic nesting. This is what most customers actually want in the end, but um, this is all up to your specific use case. Um, we don't want to limit anything here. And now our new queue is created. I'm just going to make sure to assign it to the Zcable group so it appears um, in, the, in the correct list. Next, we're going to go into the queue properties to set up all the remaining information. Um, first, we're going to double check the media setup just to make sure that this is the maximum of 600 millimeters. And then we go into the layout manager. We want to make sure to mirror all jobs on import so that they have the correct orientation after printing. We're going to confirm that the layout mode is set to auto nesting. And we want to make sure that the page is automatically closed when we reach the maximum working length of our machine, which is 880 millimeters. Um, while we're at it, we can also add a tiny space between jobs and copies. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to 4 millimeters but this is completely up to you. You can also specify uh, zero as spacing. Next, we're going to double check the production markup settings. We can see that the DTF mode has already been selected as that was our choice in the wizard. We're just gonna make sure that the QR code is also enabled. And last but not least, we're going into the cutter actions, into cutter and then uh, wheat borders. We want to make sure to enable a weed border around each job and instead of knife we're actually going to do this using the perf cut process which will lead each individual graphic to, to be perforated in the end and not fully cut out. And I'm also just going to specify a small offset here. Now you do have the option of um, applying an operation around each job and uh, each page. So, for example, you could perforate individual graphics on a page and then also cut out, a completely full cut out um, each page um, by, by enabling this option. But for the sake of this example, we're just going to disable that and going to confirm with OK. At this point, all of the required settings are done. 
and we can give it a go with our test files. I'm just going to drag them in. This is just going to take a moment to import. You can already see them appearing on the right. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the largest graphic a few times so we get um, a full page. As we can see, Digital Factory now automatically created a new page after the maximum length has been reached. Now we just have to wait for all the previews to sort themselves out. And once that is done, we can instruct Digital Factory to create the cut file. And now we can see that the processing has finished. We can simply cut this now using the uh, cut job action. If we had a printer here, we could also just do print and cut job and then it would happen at the same time. Now this is just going to process and um, after this is done, we should see our cut files appear in the folder that we've previously selected. This is just going to take a little bit of time now. Now the processing has been completed. We can see that the job moved down into the other list. And if we take a look at our folder, we can see that there's two new cut files that have just been generated by Digital Factory. Please note that we get two files here because the printed document can be cut in both ways. So top to bottom or bottom to top. So the orientation in which you put it into the machine doesn't matter. It will always just work. Um, this already concludes our video for setting up the new queue utilizing perforation cutting from scratch. In the next video we'll be taking a look on how to do the same thing but instead of perforation cutting we're going to do contra cutting instead. Enjoy!